Hello everyone and welcome back to another Tasty Blender tutorial. Today we are making wooden vegetables. This idea is a combination of two things. Uh, one was a comment that I received recently on YouTube. I could do some geometric shapes and me scrolling through Pinterest looking for some references and ideas found out like small wooden figurines of trees and bushes and I thought how can I make this work together. We'll go through the modeling, we'll do like a carrot, a leek and an onion. We'll create the wooden PBR texture. So let's get into it. Okay, we're gonna open up Blender 2.83. I'm gonna go into front view and I'll start modeling my carrot. The carrot is going to be extra easy. Just shift A, add a mesh and a cube. We're going to scale this cube up slightly to about a scale of two. We're gonna add a subdivision modifier of one by pressing control one. So we get this shape under my modifier stamp and I'll apply this subdivision. So I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna press O for proportional editing. And if you don't know what proportional editing is, you're gonna see it right now. I'm gonna select the bottom vertex, press GZ, and then if I scroll my mouse, you can see that the movement influences a lot more vertices. And that's the fall off of the proportional editing. Okay, I want to make sort of a carrot type form. So an elongated bottom. Press control 2 to add another subdivision modifier of 2. Or maybe we can drop it down to 1. So it looks like that. So we're working with less vertices. We can also scale it on the Y axis like that. So we're trying to make it just a bit thinner. Maybe we can move it down on the Z just a bit more like that. Control A to reset the scale and shift Control Alt C and put the origin to geometry. So that's going to reposition the origin relative to the geometry of the object. Press one on your numpad to go into front view again. I'm gonna move it up with G on the Z axis like that. I want to apply the subdivision modifier. There's a very particular reason. We won't be complicating by sculpting the detail. Rather, we'll use what we have at hand to actually create the little lines of the carrot. I'm gonna choose in edit mode the edge select and I'll select two or three edges that are going along the actual carrot. Something like that, okay? Press Control B to bevel I'm going to bevel them. You can make them wider, you can make them smaller, and this width should work. You can also click on the bottom left corner and you can correct the offset later. Next, we're gonna press I to inset, hold control, and then pull the mouse inside. And you can also let go of control and then hold shift to decide what the taper angle is going to be. One thing we need to do right now is just to check it, control two, and we put our modifier. Now, you can see we have a couple of issues. First of all, these are too wide, and also we're having these weird edges at the end. We're gonna return to a couple of steps back. So for the bevel, we're gonna make it just a bit tighter, something like that. I'm gonna inset again, I'm going to pull it in, I'm going to bring it closer, somewhere about there. For the edges, what I recommend doing is just go to the vertex select tool and join all of these vertices with M at center. Press Control 2, Shade Smooth, and you can see we solved the issue and it looks a bit more stylized. Let's do that on all of the other vertices. So we're again going to select everyone, M, merge at center. And now to check how everything looks, press Control 2 for the subdivision, W to shade smooth, and that's it. Let's increase the viewport slightly, so we get a bit more. But that's it, that's, that's looking pretty good for a very minimalistic carrot. For the actual leaves, we're not gonna complicate as much. Just Shift A, mesh a cube. We're gonna pull that cube up. We're gonna scale this bad boy on the Y axis, Control 2 in edit mode. We're going to choose the top vertices. So shift select the top vertices or choose the face select like so, and just scale them on the X axis. If you're worried, you can also turn off your proportional editing and just scale on the X axis. You can also scale it a bit on the Y so it gets a bit more dimension. We, maybe we can exit edit mode and scale it on the x-axis ever so slightly, so it looks something like that. Let's increase the viewport to, let's say, 3, render to 3, W shade smooth, 
and we get this. Let's position it so it's clipping with our carrot. And now for the others, we're just going to duplicate that one. We're going to move it 0.7 on the X axis, rotate it on the Y axis by, let's say, 30 degrees. We're going to press G and Y and pull it back so it's just behind the first leaf. And we're going to scale it down to about 0.7 and pull it down. Duplicate it, Shift D, rotate it on the Z axis, minus 180 degrees and position it so it's directly behind that leaf. Now we can just bring them closer and we can also turn them on the X axis like that. Shift select all of these three leaves, then select the carrot, control P and object keep transform. So that's going to parent our leaves to this little carrot. Next one, let's try the onion. So I'm gonna move the cursor back to the beginning, to the origin by pressing Shift S, cursor to world origin, Shift A, and we'll try and make a onion or garlic clove or whatever. I'll use UV sphere. I'm going to scale it up slightly, GZ, so I can move it up. For this UV sphere, I'll go into the vertex select. I'll select this loop on top, so Shift Alt and then select on the edge loop, and I'll select the central one as well. Delete those faces by pressing X and then selecting faces, and I'll do the same at the bottom. Just that at the bottom, I'll be choosing a wider circle. For the shape, we're going to choose the top of our onion or our garlic clove. We're gonna re-enable proportional editing, but we'll also click on this icon, where we have this fall off and we'll choose sharp because this is going to influence the way that the other vertices follow the main transform. So we're going to press GZ and you can see that the line is much sharper than the one we used previously, something like that. Now we want to make it, let's say a bit sharper. For the next part, we'll be choosing the bottom so we're going to choose the bottom we're going to choose a sphere fall off and now if we press g and z and try pushing it you can see that it's a completely different fall off what i suggest doing in this case is just scrolling so you can find where it starts to work on all of the vertices so it's very malleable and then you try to work the shape into existence something like that maybe something like that just get the approximate shape i'm going to press w to shade smooth Shift, Control, Alt, C, Origin to Geometry. That's extremely important because we want to have our geometry at center. Now I'm going to select every other edge on the actual object, like so, because we will be scaling these towards the center of the onion or garlic clove. Don't forget to disable proportional editing for this one. So press O again, S, Shift, Z. So you're just scaling on the X and Y axis and then pull everything inside, like that. Control one or two for the subdivision modifier. And now we can just check and maybe make it just a bit less strong. Maybe we can pull the scale out slightly so it's a bit weaker, so it's not as strong. For the top of our onion or garlic clove or whatever, we're going to just choose a couple of these edges. We're gonna go into front view Press E to extrude, and we'll extrude them up, about 0.5. You can also see in the bottom left, 0.5. Then we're going to choose another, let's say, a slightly bigger segment of these. Front view again, let's pull them out to 0.5 again. Front view again, and let's pull them up to 0.5. Let's continue, maybe now we can choose a shorter one. NumPad 1, E to extrude to 0 0.5. So we're just randomly choosing these leaves on the actual onion. When you're done with all of them, let's just add a solidify modifier and we're gonna add it before the subdivision. I'm gonna increase the thickness so we get sort of that leafy consistency. And now I want to press Control R and put a couple of edge loops. So I'm just going to put an edge loop there, edge loop there. Since they are extruded, each leaf is going to have its separate edge loop. I'm going to select the top of these leaves, so like that. And now with the S and scale, I can just pull them out on the X and Y axes, like that. 
You can also play with the proportional editing. You can try and maybe just select a few random ones, something like that, and then you just press S, roll down the fall off influence, and you can maybe stretch them out so you get a bit of difference. But that's basically it. And for the bottom, we're not gonna complicate too much. We'll just select all of these faces. Let me just turn proportional editing off for now. I'm gonna connect them with F, press E to extrude. So we're extruding downwards. And I'm gonna press Control B to bevel and make an edge like that. So it's like a nice bottom edge. The shape is still not good. So I want to push it down just slightly. So it's a bit rounder. Now it's a bit too elongated. So I'm just going to press the proportional editing. I'm going to go with the smooth fall off and I'm going to increase it like that. I'm going to pull it down. Then I'm going to go into the bottom vertices in wireframe mode, select just the bottom vertices and then pull those up as well. Control A for scale which changes our solidify modifier so we can thicken him up a bit and shift control alt c origin to geometry and we have our minimalistic onion for our leak we're going to press shift a mesh cylinder we're going to reduce the size of the vertices we're going to drop them down to let's say 16 in our case I'm going to go into edit mode first i will make the bottom edge so I'll press ctrl b a couple of scrolls and let's make a sort of narrow edge something like that exit edit mode s and scale it on the y-axis to a scale of 0 0.9 something like that go back into front view enter edit mode choose the top edge bring it up slightly like that and I'm going to press I to inset the top face. Now, this is going to dictate how thick our leaves are going to be. I think this is going to work pretty fine. You can also adjust the thickness in your bottom left menu. Press I to inset, drop it down, and I'm going to choose the face select. And I'll just choose one half. So I'll choose one side, go into front view, E to extrude, and I'm going to pull this up like that. Control R. And I'm going to put in, let's say, three loop cuts, something like that. Now, I want to have sort of a flaring of these leaves. So the way I would do it is I'm just going to select the top edge like that. Enable proportional editing. And I'm going to press G and move it on the X axis. I'm trying to get that type of leak curvature. So I'm just going to drag the top like that. Then I'm going to drag it again, but I'll increase the influence slightly. Okay, maybe that's just a bit too much. So I'm going to bring it back. Just limit the influence like that. And then press G again, increase the influence, and bring it out even further. Maybe like that. Like that works fine. Go back into edit mode. Select the other side of the edges. Bring them up, so don't forget to exit proportional editing for this one. E to extrude, maybe we can do this one slightly lower, maybe somewhere around there. Control R, put again three loop cuts, select the top. Now, in this one, it's going to be a bit problematic to actually take care because the influence is going to also influence the other side. So I'll just choose this side of my celery leaf or whatever like that. I'm going to choose the top faces, so shift selecting everything. And I can press P and separate the selection. That's going to separate my selection from the bottom. Because now if I want to use proportional editing, I can just influence this part and I can also work the leaf a bit better into the actual model. Something like that. G, X, Let's bring this bad boy out slightly. Again, increase the influence, bam, like that. Now, what we can do is just scale this on the y-axis like that, so it has that bit of flaring. I'm going to also scale this part over here, so it has a bit of flaring as well, so it's a bit more open. So right now, I want to work this form into the leak. So this is the last step that we'll be doing. 
Basically, I'll just first add the subdivision modifiers so I can see what's happening a bit better in my scene. I'm going to add all of these shade smooths and everything. I'm going to move this guy with control on the x-axis. For these parts, I want to make the faces for every single one. So we're repeating, sort of redoing the process that was done earlier. When I have this part joined like that, I'm just going to grab the edges that are closest Disable proportional editing, press G twice, so I'm just moving on the actual vertex or actual edge like that. And I'm trying to just make sort of a curvature on the actual object, something like that. Look at it also from the tops. And I'm just going to bring this bad boy back in like that. Edit mode. I want to select the two edges on the sides, press S, Y. And you can also enable proportional editing for this one. S, Y, and then increase the influence as much as you can, and then try and work the actual leaf into it. Something like that. And we have our little stock over here. So I'm just going to parent those. Control P, object keep transform. That's it. So that's going to be it for the modeling part of our tutorial this is going to be it for this one we've modeled the leek we've modeled the onion and the carrot in our next part we'll take a look at how to texture all of these how to create that wooden sort of varnished polished material for our miniature veggies in any case let me know what you thought about the tutorial in the comments leave a like i always appreciate those i read the comments i take them to heart so please feel free to tell me anything uh, thank you so much for the support on the channel lately we've been doing really well we're fast approaching 3k subs which is incredible so hopefully we'll go strong from here in any case thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one